In this video, I present one of the least exciting sports cars in the world. It's a Mercedes-Benz SLK and it's a 200. Full stop. No supercharger. Very hub nut. It's, um, yeah, I mean, it still looks sporty. You've still got sporty, you know, bonnet bulges and um, it, it's still very much all bonnet and not very much of anything else. Uh, it's based on the um, W202 um, C-Class Saloon, the first of the C-Classes, uh, the car that replaced the original 190. Uh, the SLK stands for Super Light Kurtz, uh, which is, oh, Sport, no, I got that wrong, that's Sports Lights Kurtz, because so, it's a sports car, it's light, and Kurtz means short, I believe, and it is that, it is quite dainty. Uh, even though it's all bonnet. You'll notice it's been debadged, so no one knows the extent of your poverty as you um, drive this um, rather mediocre sports car. I think it's 134 brake horsepower, and uh, it's not a light car, um, despite the um, L of SLK. Um, it's got some big fat rubber though, and of course it's got a folding roof that disappears into the um, boot, which naturally we will have a look at shortly. Um, but let's start inside. Um, I mean, it's not the perfect example, this one, but you know, it's all right. That just makes it more hubnut, more charming. Uh, if we open the interior, it's all looking very worn in here. Um, the paint on the plastic is fading, the seats are cracking. Yeah, it's all um, very, very scabby. And um, yet again, I've managed to leave the steering wheel in an ugly position. Just heave that round. Um, but the dials look quite smart, I think, in their off-white nature. We've got an immobiliser, um, which obviously suffered some key damage um, going around it. So, um, very Mercedes. We've got um, a single column stalk to do um, indicators and wipers. So that means you need to rotate it for the different wiper settings, which means you can't do that with your hands off. But there is a mist function, and you push more for a wash. And then, obviously, as you'd expect, with the main beam, and the flashes, so um, a multi-function stalk if ever there was one. And over the other side we've just got the key. Um, on the scabby dashboard we've got um, a replacement stereo, five speed heater fan and um, dual zone as well. We've got cup holders, obligatory for the 1980s. Um, but yeah, I mean the quality is not really there. It doesn't feel like a premium sports car despite having a damper on its glove box like that um yeah it, it just feels a bit cheap and nasty this was not um a good time for mercedes-benz oh, that's quite smart uh ooh, in terms of quality and um yeah this is the time um leading up to the merger with chrysler where it just got worse but yeah in the 90s mercedes seemed to lose its way oh sorry mercedes-benz must give carl benz his due as well and um, especially interior plastic quality just went absolutely out the window. I've got a bit more storage back here as well for a random pot of something. There's a bit of space behind the seat and um, obviously there's a bit of space in the boot as well but of course the problem is um, you can only have the space in the boot if you're not going to fold the roof back. Oh and that's heavy. So yeah you must have that tray in place before the roof will lower and um, oh beaded seat covers nice luxury there um, but yeah I mean look at the complex nature of all this because the boot needs to hinge both ways I believe for the roof to fold away it's um, yeah that's uh, quite exciting some engineering going on right there right love we'll poke, poke about under the bonnet I think uh, bonnet release would be under here I should suspect and I bet it's on the same place on the right-hand drive ones as well. And there we go, the mighty two-litre non-supercharged engine. Um, we, we didn't even get these in the UK. All our um, uh, SLKs had um, K for compressor, and most were the larger 2.3-litre. Uh, they did manage to cram a six-cylinder in here, and um, AMG naturally managed to do an even sportier one, but no, that's all we've got today. 
Um, a very long auxiliary belt. Look at the path that takes. Blimey. It must get even more complicated once you've got a belt-driven supercharger in place. Just the one massive bonnet strut. But there you go. That's an engine. That's a braking system. I suspect there's a battery under there. Clang. Right, we better do some roof demonstrations. Um, I will get you set up so you can view it. Mightily impressive, I think. I don't know how good your viewing angle was, but um, yeah, there's a little wind deflector that seemed to pop up there. Have it since popped down again? Uh, it's a bit strange, or maybe that's just to stop you getting your hands caught in the mechanism. But um, nonetheless, no, no, the geek has turned pretty. I think it makes quite a difference having the roof off. Um, quite a stylish looking car, maybe. No? No, you don't agree? You think that front end's a bit plain? Yeah, you may have a point. Right, I shall find a way of attaching my camera and we shall go for a drive. Right then, uh, I've got you mounted on the passenger window, so hopefully that won't shake around too much. Do the um, immobiliser thing. I hate immobilisers, they're such a pain in the backside. There we go. Um, I was told it had air conditioning, but I can't see a button for that. A bit slow to respond. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be an AC button, so I don't know. That all seems fine. I don't know what EC means. I don't think I'm going to bother. Oh, that's curious. Bizarre. Right, um, nice um, snubby little um, lever here, but again, the feel is horrible. The interior plastics are just... Um, yeah, mm, I don't think that's meant to do that. Um, yeah, the interior plastics are just grim, but... Yeah, a fairly sensible indicator noise. Um, traction control off. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just going to be fun with 134 brake horsepower. Regardless, let's drive. This is actually my first time driving it without the roof on. We've already covered a few miles just to get it warmed up and find somewhere to start and do. Oh, yeah, sports car suspension. Start the recording. It's brisk enough. It's hardly a desirable sports car noise, though, is it? I imagine the um, supercharged version sounds a bit more entertaining, shall we say. Oh, this seems to be a dead end. That's not... This was a bad way to go, it turns out. So the um, SLK was, um, like I say, developed on the um, C-Class platform and uh, became fairly successful. Um, mostly supercharged versions, um, lower numbers of the V6s sold, obviously, because they're more expensive and have higher running costs. And yeah, I, I, the, the folding roof was definitely um, a big fashion statement when this car came out in 1996. Uh, certainly a bit unusual then, there weren't many cars that had that sort of thing going on, but of course it adds huge weight and complexity. Um, so, I mean, it's nice that um, you can sort of have this fancy folding roof, but it doesn't mean it's practical. I 
I'm sort of on an island, I think, at the moment, which is making finding faster roads a bit difficult. But there we go. Yeah, very long travel clutch and throttle. Very Germanic. They like a bit of travel in their pedals. But um, picks up speed reasonably well. Uh, I mean, I don't think you're going to break any um, records around the Nürburgring, but let's be honest, not everyone wants to set records around the Nürburgring, do they? I mean, I, I think this car was very well aimed at its target market, which perhaps is people who don't really want the extra sporty excitement of, say, an MX-5. It, it's a bit more about posing, really, isn't it? Let's face it. And um, now I've got my um, shorter hair. Maybe this is the sort of car even for me. I'm just going to do my window up, see if that reduces the buffering slightly. It does. Yeah, this car was developed before AMG went truly bonkers. The um, second generation uh, SLK was available with all manner of crazy horsepower. Whereas I don't think these got much above 200, 230, I think. But it, it feels more of a quality vehicle out on the road than the interior plastics would have you believe, I think. And uh, while the suspension is definitely firm, it does have a composure to it, which is quite pleasant. It's not feeling unpleasant. Although um, these roads are hardly um, the ideal testing ground. They're actually quite nice. I wonder what it would be like driving around South Wales. Oh wow. Quite a nice big canal there. No idea where I'm going which just makes this all the more fun. We're apparently at Maasbracht. Well, I can't imagine given how big the tyres are that the traction control has much to do here. Um, it's hardly trying to rein in lots of power, but again, tr electronic traction control, very much a thing of the eight, uh, 1990s, um, famously fitted to smarts as standard because they were otherwise a bit um, exciting. Also developed by Mercedes-Benz. Yeah, Mercedes-Benz had a bit of a shocker in the 90s, really, didn't it? Because um, there was the Smart, there was the A-Class that failed the Elk test so spectacularly. And yeah, build quality went through the floor. Their cars were rusting and breaking down in ways people just weren't used to. And a Smart also has horrible interior plastics. So they must have got a job lot of um, crap plastic from somewhere. But the good thing about having the roof off you can hear far fewer creaks and rattles, so that's all good. But yeah, I'm, I'm slightly at a loss what to talk about with this car. Right? These aren't the roads for testing chassis dynamics, and I'm not sure it really has any. Um, but having said that, it does feel composed and sporty. The steering, unusually, is by recirculating ball, uh, not a steering rack. So it's a bit unusual for its time. Uh, rack and pinion was pretty much the norm by the 90s, but again, Mercedes went its own way. And despite this one having 230,000 kilometres on it, the steering feels completely tight. You would, you would not really know that um, it's any different. Chicane! Yeah, feels all right. I can't say the steering is telling me a great deal about what's going on. But given how fat the tyres are, I shall assume that we're not losing grip all of a sudden. Ah, oh, the dreaded Dremples. Yeah, that was all right. I was, I was kind of forced to drive this car um, by my friend and um, yeah, thank, thanks Stein, having a lovely time. I mean, it doesn't help, the Netherlands really is not the country for sports cars. There just aren't the roads here to enjoy it. And maybe that's why the Netherlands was one of the markets where they sold the unsupercharged 
2 litre um, SLK. It's all a bit of a yawn fest really. Right. Are you ready then? We shall give it some acceleration testing. I'll bog it it. Yeah, apparently it does acceleration moderately well. And it's um it's fairly refined at these um cruising speeds of um slightly too fast. Right. Just on our way back, I've just been down the um, motorway. I turned the camera off because I was getting a bit bored myself. Um, but I did actually get it up to an indicated 140k. And um, I'm very glad I have short hair now. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was all fine. It was not horribly blowy at those speeds. And um, sat very comfortable. And I think that's something I can say about this car is it is comfortable. It, um, and it's easy to drive all the controls kind of do what you expect there's no stress trying to find any of the gears um, they're kind of just where you expect them to be so it's all well and good really where are we going here that way i think not entirely certain but i have been down here before i think but yeah that's not I think you're best off just not even pretending this is a sports car. Uh, it just hasn't got the engine for it. Uh, instead, it's, it's just a nice fun car for enjoying a bit of open top weather. Knowing that if it starts checking down, you only have to press a button and it turns into a coupe again. Uh, which does transform the driving experience. In fact, I shall demonstrate how much it transports, transforms the um, driving experience by putting the roof back up. Yes, I did slightly fear that may have become a problem, and indeed it did. Um, so, um, down go the windows, up goes the back, out comes the roof. And down goes the boot lid. Yep, all done. Right, I have to put the side windows up myself, do I? I see. Okay. Um, well, we should do that then. And this side. Oh, that's... I'm sorry, not very happy going on with the seals on that side. That window is not going up perfectly happily. Right, I shall reattach you and we shall continue. Right, so the roof on, we'll go for a drive with the roof on now. So yeah, I mean it's a slightly changed, you can hear the creak of the lever now and um but um all the seals seem to be working so it's not noisy in here but um yeah now it just feels like a perfectly ordinary car and um, the sound quality in here has definitely changed let's see if i can scroll my seat forward a bit stop it rubbing on the back there we go that's made, made things better now i've got rid of the squeak But yeah, I mean overall, this is not an exciting car, I think we can say. Um, but nonetheless, I've been glad to try one and tick the box off at last. Uh, I wonder where I'm going to go here. Yeah, there's a few more dash creaks that are now apparent because it's that more, much more peaceful with the 
roof off and you don't notice the creaking but um, yeah these interior plastics are just not nice I mean I mean I don't have a habit of doing that but when you can hear the plastics creaking and you look at them and this carbon effect I don't know if that's standard or not but that's not exactly pleasant is it yeah yeah mm, yeah yeah Oh, so bored, I completely forgot about wipers. Yeah, the blades sound a bit old, but um, no triangle of doom, decent enough wiping pattern. The jets probably need adjusting a bit, but yeah, I've got my missed function like that. Just one press away. So um, yeah, I shall say the, the windscreen wipers are favorable. got a reasonable amount of torque as well. I mean, I'm still in top gear at the moment. Seem entirely happy at that. So there we go. That was the um, Mercedes-Benz SLK 200 full stop. It's all right. Drives quite nicely. Um, not sure I'd want to own one, but if someone forced me to drive one, nor would I be that unhappy. Um, it's actually quite nice belting along um, with the wind in my hair at um, 80 miles an hour. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just not a particularly exciting car. If you want a sports car, then go for one with a punchier engine or a Mazda MX-5 or Honda S2000 or um, yeah, the list goes on. Um, if you just want something for wafting around and looking cool in, then I suppose it works. But um, you've always got the worry about how other people are judging you. Not that that's ever a problem for me. So yeah, in conclusion, yeah, not bad, but a bit meh. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe before you go. And I shall see you in a future video. Farewell.